All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this uh, live session for the Engineering Scholars Program for the e Open House of NUS. I'm Alberto Correas, I'm the director of the program. And uh, with me today, I have a panel of, um, of students, like Kai Shuen to my left, uh, Marcus to my right, Mark, and Alex, that will help me answering your questions. So, my first uh, thing to say is to you to ask questions via the Facebook Live. Don't be shy, ask anything, we're quite used, and we'll try to answer as they come in. So while waiting for your questions to come in, maybe I'll just kick off with one of the most common questions that we got in the, in the previous years, uh, which is um, the eScholars program is a 3 plus 1 program, and therefore the students will finish a bachelor degree in 3 years instead of 4. So the question that comes is how tough is it, how is it possible to squeeze uh, 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 three years into, uh, 4 years into 3? So I'll answer first from a director's perspective. We have statistics from many years actually of running a similar program, and the vast majority of students actually make it. So it is definitely possible. But my answer is a bit cold. It doesn't actually capture what the student experience is in the program. So for that, I will leave the microphone to, to Marcus to share his experience. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Marcus. Um, so for myself, in order to complete uh, my, my bachelor degree in three years, I first did some advanced placement credits, which is some um, modules that you do before even uh, school starts. And uh, this advanced, advanced placement credits allows you to be exempted from certain modules. So that uh, kind of lightens your uh, uh, workload when the school begins. Um, so I also took part in some uh, H3 um, modules. So if uh, any one of you there, out there actually took part in H3, uh, you can be uh, further exempted from uh, certain modules. So in total, I was exempted uh, 12 MCs worth of uh, modules and this really helped me to uh, work more productively and efficiently um, uh, for the other, uh, during the semester. And I think it's quite uh, okay if you manage to manage your time well and be disciplined in your work. Um, for myself, I, I was in NUS Choir, I was in NUS Sailing, and I also uh, took part in the various uh, community involvement programs. And uh, so um, there's no such thing um, as like your ND scholars, uh, um, you are very um, involved in school work a lot, uh, then you don't do anything else outside, uh, no, because there's uh, lots of other opportunities for you to participate in. And uh, uh, in general, the East Scholars program is a very, it's a very good program, uh, where, where it allows you to, uh, especially with the new NOC and the new uh, residential college program, um, it's a very exciting new program that uh, I would highly recommend everyone to join. Yeah. Okay, so for me, uh, I'm Kai Shen, I'm a year one student, and actually, um, if you compare like my background to Marcus' background, I actually came in with no um, prerequisites, as in, um, I didn't have any modules cleared under the H3, so if you don't have a H3, it's okay also, because the only module that I cleared was um, a design module that was also offered to us prior to the start of school. So. Um, I managed to clear four MCs before school started. So if you don't clear more than that, it's also okay because as long as you manage your time well throughout the entire year, um, it's actually manageable. And you also, eScholar program has uh, mentors for you to um, map out your map out your entire school academic life, like the modules that you want to take. So on that, it's quite uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so now we're receiving questions from Facebook. Um, so one of the questions asked is that how has GEP been enhanced to become the eScholars program? So uh, would you like to have us answer? So <coughs> the revamp of GEP happened actually last year. Um, so that we essentially tried to, the philosophy of the revamp was to give students even more opportunities to explore during their, their stay at NUS. So we added uh, the university town component, uh, which is included in the scholarship, including all the meal plans. This is not just because we want the students to stay in campus and have fun, which is true, they do that in, uh, in university town, but also the, uh, it's important the, the university town offers uh, academic programs, which we think are very enriching for the students, both the university town college program and the university scholars program, which are both open to the scholars. Uh, the other um, announcement, major announcement that we made to the program was the inclusion of, uh, of a master's degree. So now the scholarship uh, covers a full four years, three years of bachelor and one year of master's, 
as long as the master's is within NUS. Um, and it's a master of science, so one year, so three plus one, that's the model of the program. Uh, you can still do a master's overseas if you like, but the scholarship will not cover that. So it's very much possible to go overseas for your master's. Thank you, Prof. Um, another question that's coming in is that are polytechnic graduates eligible for e scholars program? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we, in fact, have quite a number of poly polytechnic students in, in the program. Um, so poly students will have uh, a lower number of credits to clear for graduation because some of them are cleared during their poly years. So it's actually possible for them to, to finish the bachelor in 2.5 years under the accelerated uh, program for these scholars. Okay, thank you, Prof. Okay, so now while we wait for your other questions to come in, um, one of the questions also is that um, what opportunities are there for e-scholars as, uh, as a premier engineering scholars program? Yeah, so uh, I'll pass the time over to Alex and Mark to... So I think the great thing about uh, the e-scholars program itself is that um, you have a lot of opportunities in terms of uh, developing your technical excellence. So for instance, uh, with Mentors, which we get in uh, eScholars or GP, uh, the key thing is that they will supervise you, they will be the kind of uh, the person to uh, help you in terms of any kind of curriculum uh, concerns you have. And uh, you can do things like uh, the Europe, which is the undergrad research uh, program itself. So you get a chance to experience that research. And not only that, with that enhance, uh, the enhancement to the uh, e-scholars program itself, what you get as well is you get the chance to go on a uh, NUS overseas uh, college itself, which is basically you working in tech startups, and you have that kind of experience uh, to work in a startup, which is very rare, and you really also get a chance to go on uh, student exchange programs. So some of our students have done uh, student exchange programs in uh, many parts of the world, US, uh, in the UK, so all around the world really. And yeah, let me pass the time to Mark, who will talk a bit more about the NUS uh, Overseas College. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, so I've been involved in the NUS Overseas College um, Southeast Asia program. So I spent three months in Indonesia in a fintech startup. So I think this whole program itself is very structured in a sense that it not only provides you with uh, a working experience, which is crucial um, next time when you're finding a career, it also, um, there is this, basically, this team of um, like-minded individuals that wants to be involved in the startup ecosystem or wants to become an entrepreneur. And you stay together with them. So it's not just about the internship. It's not just about the work experience. It's also about the friends and the, fr and the friendship and the bond that you can get out of these experiences. So I think personally for myself, um, I've met many people during my internship, and some of them I still keep in touch, so like friends in Indonesia. And it was really an eye-opening experience in terms of, not only in terms of work experiences, but also in terms of culturally, um, you get to immerse yourself in a new country. And I guess um, work experiences overseas is not something that is easy to come by, and through this NOC program, we really is able to um, help you um, get an edge in that. Okay, thank you, Alex and Mark. Okay, so now uh, new questions that are coming in. Okay, one question is that polytechnic students enrolled in e scholars have to complete this program in 2.5 plus 1 years. So is it possible for, to opt for the 3 plus 1? Okay, I'll take this one. Uh, so the answer is essentially yes. Um, the 2.5 2 plus 1 for poly students is the default, the standard that, that we recommend. Um, if the student thinks that because of uh, an enriching experience like an internship or, or any other extra program that, that, that he gets enrolled, there's a, there will be a delay between 2.5 and 3 years, it can, we can definitely accommodate that. So that's, that's been done before actually. Uh, in the, we advertise the 2.5 plus 1 for poly students as the default, but of course if the students, if uh, this, you know, case by case basis essentially, if the students uh, will take one extra 0.5 years because of an enriching experience or something that is uh, meaningful, we are more than happy to, to change that to 3 plus 1 years. Okay, thank you, Prof. Another question is, um, is it uh, compulsory for 
the students in G uh, in East College to take the masters after the engineer the bachelor? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, you can after the bachelor's degree uh, leave the program, leave the university, find a job or start your career. Uh, we do not bind in any way students to, to do a master's degree. Okay, another question coming in is, um, do students have the freedom to choose which residential college to go to? Uh, so, the answer is yes. Uh, we, um, we have a special partnership with RC4. So, to get, we, we issue an offer letter to a scholars program together with the offer letter for RC4. However, we understand that some students have different interests and therefore uh, the program is open to accept uh, students who are enrolled in uh, Tembuzu, College of Alice and Peter Tan, or uh, University uh, Scholars Program offered at um, uh, Cinnamon College. It's, uh, the only difference is that whereas the uh, RC4 admission comes with, because of our special partnership for all the other residential college in university town, uh, you have to go to an additional interview and then it's up to the college whether they want to take you. Yeah. So I think adding on to the fact that we are pretty agnostic to which uh, kind of residential college which you choose to go to, but the reason why we see that you know RC4 is particularly suitable. So I come from RC4 myself. So basically, residential college for it's all about systems thinking. And you think about systems thinking, it really suits the whole uh, engineering curriculum in a sense that you are solving very complex problem, breaking it down and analyzing it in terms of a system, trying to find ways you know for you to actually kind of solve problems and find out what are the key policy levers in order for you to uh, maybe answer certain questions. So systems thinking really suits the kind of engineering focus and it's something which we actually see in NUS engineering as uh, one of the focus areas as well. And it's something which we uh, which uh, really suits the NUS uh, e-scholars program as well. Yeah, so just to summarize, we are open to all university town colleges as long as they offer either the university town college program or the university scholars program. Yeah, I, I'd like to add on to Alex's point. So actually, most of the e-scholars are in RC4, but as for me, I'm in Cinnamon College, which is under the University Scholars, Scholars Program. Yeah, so it is indeed a very different experience in the sense of the things that we, the modules that we are able to take. So for USP, it's a more multidisciplinary aspect on it, but then for RC4, is a systems thinking aspect to it. So it really depends on what type of um, modules you are looking for. So the modules differ from Tembusu to CAP to Cinema and to RC4. So you have to go and find out what these programs are for you to know what is suitable for you. Yeah. Okay. So now moving on to the next question. One of the very popular questions is that what is the difference between NUS A Scholars Program and NTU's Renaissance Engineering Program? So Paul? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, a good question. So my answer would be that these are um, both premier programs, but it's the academic part that is uh, fundamentally different. So the NTU or Renaissance Engineering program is essentially an engineering science uh, program uh, with a master in uh, management of technology. So it's still at the end plus a master, but it's engineering science plus a master of management in technology. Uh, the way we designed the program here is, is with a different philosophy is that we allow the students to choose any of the existing uh, Bachelor of Engineering, depending on the specific interest, be chemical engineering, mechanical, electrical, whichever. And on top of that, we also allow the student to choose any master's degree. So we do not prescribe the field of the master's degree that the students will, uh, will read. It can be even outside of the Faculty of Engineering, as long as it's an MSc in this one year. So I think that's the, uh, the core difference. Uh, I don't want to... Uh, I think the tiny difference in scholarship and uh, you know, all that is is, uh, is not particularly major. The, the real major difference is this, this academic philosophy that is quite different. Okay. Uh, Prof, another question is that uh, what is the size of the intake for e-scholars every year? So, more or less, the, the, number, the number that we aim at is between 50 and 60. Uh, okay, so another popular um, question is that people are interested in the NUS engineering and medicine track. So, um, can you tell us more about this track, or like? Uh, so yes, so this is a very uh, popular track uh, because it uh, it's actually a very good one if you ask me my opinion because uh, people who, who go into this track will have an engineering background and then a medicine. Uh, 
uh, medicine training, and I'm a biomedical engineer by training, I think that's the one, one of the most ideal makeup that, that, that there is for, for a professional nowadays. Um, so, regarding the scholars program, uh, it is very much possible to, to enter the engineering and medicine track and the scholars program. So the, um, uh, the, 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 the fact is that to enter the engineering and medicine track, you need to uh, take here in the NUS, the Innovation and Design Program, which is open to scholars. Uh, so you have to uh, apply to scholars, apply to the Innovation and Design uh, Program, which is very much possible. The only caveat that, caveat that I would like to mention is that, uh, as Marcus was saying, you have the ability to take a number of bus placement credits. So in the Innovation and Design Program is quite rigorous, and therefore they require students in the scholars program is they want to apply to that one to clear at least three advanced placement credit modules before entering. Other than that, you are very much free to apply and do it. Yeah. Okay, um, so now while we wait for the other questions to come in, um, would you like to tell us, uh, I think we could touch on the residential life in NUS, so yeah. uh, Marcus, would you like to tell us about um, your residential life? Yeah, uh, Alex. Alex, yeah. So maybe I'll share a bit more on like the kind of residential life. So the great thing about this program is that it's been converted into this residential uh, program in, uh, in the sense that students in, in the East College program are all you know, working and uh, living together in, under the same roof, mostly in uh, RC4 or maybe in other residential college. So the great thing about that is it means that we can meet very like-minded people, but at the same time we can meet people from various faculties. The faculties range from FASS to Faculty of Science, so you get that kind of diverse experience uh, in terms of uh, interacting with different people. And even, you know, the great thing about having, about being in a residential college uh, is that in a residential college, you're actually able to take on modules, specific modules, which caters towards a certain team, uh, be it systems thinking uh, in RC4. So in that sense, you get the diversity of opinions. You get to develop yourself mentally. You get to, you know, uh, kind of war game with different people, different faculties, and you start to understand, you know, what do you know, different people uh, kind of think, and it develops you as a person as well, because it develops a soft skill, and it's also one of the kind of focus which we see, uh, which we do find important in the East College program, because there's now a stronger emphasis on that kind of entrepreneurial and soft skill spirit which uh, we as graduates kind of need. So, in, so I think that East College program, uh, coupled with that residential life experience, is really uh, fascinating. And I think may maybe just moving on, we can ask another question, which is, you know, what is uh, kind of kind of special things which the e scholars program uh, allows you to, you know, uh, attain? So maybe uh, Marcus can share a bit more about his, uh, you know, experience in Cambridge where he spent a year there. Um, I saw yes, I spent my uh, second year in the University of Cambridge where I took um, yeah, final year of bachelor exams. Um, I think it was a very interesting uh, experience. Uh, managed to uh, come in contact with uh, many, many uh, smart people who uh, uh, I really enjoy uh, interacting with. Um, I think it's a very um, unique experience, especially um, uh, for NUS. Uh, NUS is the only uh, NUS Engineering is the only uh, faculty to have both exchange with the University of Oxford and University of Cambridge, and uh, I think this this pro this uh, exchange program will continue for. Uh, uh, future uh, many years to come. So, uh, for for those students who are very interested in uh, coming to uh, going for exchange to uh, the University of Cambridge and the University of Oxford, uh, please do uh, apply to um, uh, uh, engineering. Um, and uh, I think for the East College program, uh, uh, there's also this NLC experience. And uh, what Mark said just now, um, where you're able to go overseas to to intern in, the, in an overseas startup, I think this is also a very valuable. Uh, experience that uh, I really um, highly welcome everyone to uh, join us and uh, be part of this uh, exclusive programs. Yeah. Okay, thank you Marcus. Okay, uh, one question coming in is that um, can you enroll in a double degree program or a second major when you are in the East College program? Alright, for the double degree program the answer is no. Uh, the reason is that the double degree program actually takes five years to take two degrees so it's exactly the opposite as the accelerated program. That this college program is so the answer there is no you have to choose the point of entry between the two uh, the second major the answer is yes it's possible to clear a second major uh, as an e scholar uh, the reason is that the way the second major works in NUS is that 
we have a number of credits which are restricted electives that all students have, including the scholars. They can, they can decide to invest them in, in the second major or a minor. In fact, the uh, innovation and design program that I just talked about that leads to the Duke and US medicine truck is a second major, in fact, and therefore it, it's very much possible to do that. Yep, so I will just share a little about the innovation design program because personally I'm involved in and taking it as a second major. So um, how you go about doing that is actually you have um, electives and using those elective credits, you will be taking um, those second major um, that is revolving around um, innovation and design. So you learn about design thinking skill sets as well, and, and you also do a lot of um, design projects and your final project would most of these projects will be um, working closely with industry partners or even like stakeholders outside um, to build and solve a problem, like a real world problem. So it's um, very much focused on the design aspect of it and whether you can actually um, cater to the pain points and of the, of the people that you're trying to help. Um, so for myself, I don't um, see any problem in terms of my time management or module management. I do not need to take any extra credits um, to take up this second major. I'm still doing it within um, the pre-existing um, curriculum. Um, so yeah, whoever is interested um, to take up a second major, be it in terms of IDP or something else, I think very importantly is uh, you have to plan ahead and to work closely with the mentor you're assigned to to basically um, figure out a study plan. And this would all, and um, e-scholars as well, and U.S. engineering would help a lot in, in this aspect. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so uh, one question is, um, are there any preset combination of engineering undergraduate and master programs that is recommended? So, um, if we, okay, which masters outside of engineering are particularly suited for engineering and undergraduate? So, any preset combination that are recommended? Maybe I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. What What normally happens? What should happen? And will happen is that the. Uh, once, uh, to answer this question, you will consult your mentor and uh, based on your inclination decide uh, which master's degree to take. Uh, if you ask me, outside of engineering, the most popular one are, are uh, the ones related to either data analytics or finance or computing, these kind of disciplines. Uh, but recommending one particular preset is not quite in the philosophy of the program. It's more like you talk to your mentor over the years actually and he would be he would be able to advise you and, uh, and uh, on, on the masters. Yeah. So I think I think adding on to what uh, Prof Alberto actually mentioned, which is that the the great thing about this e scholars program is that the masters itself you can take any masters of science within NUS of course, and you can also choose to take a uh, masters overseas. So for instance, some of our alumni end up in uh, MIT doing a PhD. Some of our alumni go to uh, Imperial College to do a master's in finance. So really our alumni are all uh, around the world itself. Uh, and you actually get the kind of experience uh, in, in that sense. Yep. Okay, so it's almost um, 2.30, so we'll move on to our very last question. So one last question would be, um, prior to the e scholars matriculation, students can self-study and take exams to clear some modules. So is this true and are you able to elaborate more on that? So is this true? Yes. Uh, it is definitely true. These are called advanced placement credits and uh, to clear them you have to pass an advanced placement test. Uh, it's based on a self-study. These are typically uh, foundational subjects like math, physics and some computing. And um, it's not only uh, true, but it's actually recommended. <laughs> I, I encourage students, students to do that because they will uh, make their graduation requirements a bit easier to meet uh, in three years. And also, uh, I'd, like to, I'd, like, I'd like to add one more thing about this, is that I encourage students to, to, to take this test because uh, talking to many students, uh, is they, they say that it's actually kind of free because if you fail with them, there's actually no penalty. Uh, you, just <laughs> you just have to retake the module during the semester and nothing happens. Okay? So that's it. Uh, maybe one last piece of advice. Uh, I really recommend everyone to, to look at your major requirements and then see which of these modules are actually under the advanced placement credits. Actually, um, go and look onto the website and see uh, what are the dates 
for to apply for this advanced placement credit so that you can be more prepared uh, and also uh, you won't miss out these days and you're able to uh, finish your degree in time. So very important to do your homework, uh, check whatever modules these are and see if it's availability for that particular year. Yeah. All right, I think our time is up. It's been a pleasure uh, to be here live uh, with you. If you have any further questions, do not hesitate to email uh, us. The scholar's office will be uh, very happy to answer the questions. On behalf of the students and myself, thank you very much. Thank you.